This is WPXI-TV Pittsburgh. Channel 11 News, your 24-hour news source, reporting on the victory in the Persian Gulf up to the minute. Now, reporting live for Channel 11 News, Phil Martin and Margaret Shortridge. More encouraging news in the ceasefire tonight. Hello, everyone. I'm Bill Martin. And I'm Margaret Shortridge. Iraq's ambassador to the United States says 10 foreign prisoners of war have been released. Now, the Pentagon is not confirming that release. The ambassador says six of the POWs are Americans, including a woman who's believed to be Melissa Rathbun Neely of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Military sources say she was captured on the Saudi-Kuwaiti border January 30th. But the Iraqis are thought to have at least 13 allied POWs, and that's more than the number reported released. Meantime, the United Nations Security Council, having dictated tough terms to Iraq for a formal ceasefire, is turning more conciliatory with meetings on easing the economic embargo now. This comes in the wake of Iraq agreeing to all U.N. resolutions laying the final groundwork for peace. The council is considering also rushing deliveries of water purification equipment, food and medicine. There are fears of malnutrition and epidemics of cholera and typhoid now in Iraq. Allied Commander Norman Schwarzkopf feels he helped clear the way for peace. Earlier today, he and other Allied leaders met with Iraqi leaders in the desert. Now, during the meeting dubbed Battlefield Negotiations, the Iraqis agreed to all Allied terms of a ceasefire. But the military says there still may be some pockets of fighting. There's never a guarantee on the battlefield, particularly with some isolated units still probably not receiving uh, the word of the, uh, of the cessation of offensive operations. But we feel very confident that given the arrangements made today, uh, that we shouldn't experience any more real significant problems. The talks today were held under tight security at an air base in southern Iraq. Four days after announcing a ceasefire, the Allies are still taking Iraqi prisoners. The U.S. military is reporting it's rounded up another 1,400 Iraqis on Felaka Island, located at the mouth of the Kuwait City Harbor. The U.S. says there may be more Iraqis on the strategic island who still haven't given up. And now refugees from Iraq are reporting demonstrations against Saddam Hussein. Unrest is taking place in several cities, according to Iranian radio broadcasts. And police and protesters are fighting in, in the streets of at least four cities now. Some Iraqi exiles are predicting Saddam Hussein will not be in power much longer. The U.S. military says a helicopter has crashed in Saudi Arabia. The crash killed the pilot of the chopper, Major Marie Rossi. Now, Rossi becomes the first female pilot to die in the crisis in the Gulf. The 32-year-old native of New Jersey is seen here back in February. Now, three other people were on board that chopper. They were also killed, including a specialist, William Brace. He is from near Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And the morning continues for the 13 local soldiers killed in Monday's Iraqi Scud missile attack in Saudi Arabia. In rural Washington County, the town of Hickory remembered one of its own today. 20-year-old Joseph Bongiorni was a specialist in Greensburg's 14th Army Reserve Unit. It was standing room only at the local fire hall as family and neighbors gathered for this memorial service. Jess King is the principal at the local Whatever high school. The wrong had to be corrected, and Joe simply had to be a part of making it right again. No country can afford to lose its Joe Bongiorni's. But because of Joe and others like him, an entire nation is free again. The service was organized by a local businessman who wanted to do something for the family in their time of grief. Students and faculty of the Indiana University Music Department held a memorial service for former classmate Christine Mills of the 14th Quartermaster Unit, who was also killed in the Scud attack. The concert was originally scheduled to be a Lenten performance, but participants decided to pay tribute to the victims of the attack. The IUP orchestra and choir performed as family members listened and remembered their loved ones. Well, Bill, military families around here are continuing to worry about their loved ones in the Middle East. And a couple dozen families had a chance in North Huntington today to learn how to cope with their anxieties and fears. They heard from John James, a Vietnam veteran, author and founder of the Grief Recovery Institute in Los Angeles. Is I want to talk about some of the things that have happened to you as the result of Desert Storm, Desert Shield and Desert Storm, that you may not be aware have happened that are indeed good. Now, most agree that even though the war is over, the concern won't be over until the loved ones are back home.
Some Middle East leaders also want U.S. troops home soon. Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak says post-war security is up to the Arabs, though, but not the Westerners. Mubarak says he's opposed to any Western involvement and says Arab protection is all the security needed for the Middle East. Nonetheless, Secretary of State James Baker will visit the region next week discussing an allied security plan. Well, here now is a recap on the news from the Persian Gulf. The Iraqi ambassador to the U.S. says that Iraq has released 10 Allied prisoners of war, including six Americans. The Pentagon has no comment on the report. The U.S. military says the ceasefire is official. Iraqi leaders have agreed to all Allied demands. However, it warns we may still see some pockets of fighting. And a female American pilot has died. Her helicopter went down in Saudi Arabia. Three other Americans also died in the crash, and that is the latest on the crisis in the Persian Gulf. Elsewhere around the world tonight, independence, it's what people in the Baltics are voting for tonight. Folks in Estonia and Latvia have voted overwhelmingly in favor of independence from the Soviet Union. The votes, though, carry little legal weight, but are considered a strong political challenge to Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. Well, you may have some problems getting to work tomorrow morning. Kevin is up later to tell us why. And you'll hear some eyewitness accounts of a fiery plane crash in Colorado when we come back. Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships, calls this time out to tell you about the other game in town. The Oldsmobile drive to the Final Four Celephon. Right now, a brand new Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra with V6 power, air, automatic, and 32 standard features is just $12,935 for qualified first-time buyers after $1,000 cash back and $600 first-time buyer's allowance. Hey, with deals like this, you can't miss. Now at your Grand Olds Gang dealer. Michael Midler might not be the next Bill Mazeroski or even the star of his Little League team. Still, folks who've seen him play say that Michael Midler has quite an arm. They tell his story far and wide. The story of a young boy whose severed arm was reattached at Allegheny General. There he underwent 11 hours of arm reconstruction and microsurgery, as well as months of physical therapy and with some of the most sophisticated trauma care and orthopedics available in our field, Michael Midler is now back in his. Allegheny General, on the frontier of advanced specialty care. cash with $500 cash back on new 1991 Sierras or choose low APR GMAC financing. GMC truck. It's not just a truck anymore. See number one Cochrane GMC, Town and Country GMC, and Wright GMC truck. Well, witnesses say the plane slammed into a drained pond just behind a large apartment building and in front of several houses. A United Airlines 737 crashing just south of the Colorado Springs Municipal Airport. The plane was on final approach. In just seconds, the United Airlines 737 was reduced to a fireball. This home video shows the explosion ripping through this neighborhood of Colorado Springs. The jet barely missed, crashing into a crowded complex. Yeah, I was like watching TV and I heard the plane coming and um, the whole apartment started shaking, you know, and then the, the plane went like right over our apartment. It was like maybe like a foot away from our apartment or something. And then I just looked out the window and there was like smoke and everything at the park and everything. There's all these people running down there trying to help and everything. United Airlines Flight 585 started its stay in Peoria, Illinois. Stopped in Moline and Denver before crashing on final approach into Colorado Springs Municipal Airport. The impact killed 20 passengers and a crew of five. I seen the people in the plane. There was banging on the windows. The pilot reported no trouble. You can see weather was clear, winds gusty. Investigators are now picking through the wreckage, looking for any kind of clues. And the National Transportation Safety Board is trying to figure out just what happened. The U.S. Navy says three people died when a Navy jet crashed in a residential neighborhood. 
The jet went down in Glenview, Illinois, and people who saw the crash say the pilot seemed to deliberately avoid hitting houses before that crash. Back home, state police in Pittsburgh say they have no further clues in the shooting death of a Wilkinsburg man. An autopsy by the Allegheny County coroner reveals 29-year-old Gregory Dixon died of multiple gunshot wounds. He was found late last night in a car on Ajax Way in Braddock. Residents of the neighborhood say they saw someone running from the scene of the crime. Police are reporting no suspect or motive yet in that shooting. Police in Beaver County have released the name of a woman rescued from frigid waters yesterday morning. They say that 42-year-old Barbara Epling was pulled from Hereford Manor Lake by a police officer after the car she and Ronald Lefevre of Elwood City were in. And the car somehow rolled into the lake. Lefevre made it to shore and got help for Epling, who was overcome by hypothermia in the cold water. She was lifelighted to Allegheny General Hospital, where she is now in critical condition. No charges have been filed, and the investigation continues. The manufacturer of the cold remedy Sudafed is recalling more than one million packages of the product tonight after evidence of tampering. Two people are dead and one hospitalized in Washington state from cyanide found in some of the Sudafed 12-hour capsules.